Hello, this is Sam Rocha. I am here with my very first doctoral seminar at UBC. Our course was titled Pedagogy of the Oppressed Revised Revisited and these are the four brave souls who enrolled and stayed enrolled in the class. <laughs> and uh, we are uh, at my house right now um, at our final session and this video is simply to document and reflect and think about uh, the class and to some extent preserve its memory. So who wants to start talking? Well, first of all, I'm not, are you, I, I'm not convinced you're recording. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the, I, I think one of the coolest things about the course for me was being such a, a small group of individuals, uh, but reading the same text and, and then discussing and we were very quick to get on each other's, um, almost like get on each other's wavelengths, um, which made it easy for certain tropes to emerge in our thinking. Um, uh, theoretical baselines that, uh, a shorthand almost, that we could use with each other in order to uh, delve into concepts deeper. I thought that was something that um, is not something you can find easily in a lot of other situations. And it's, it's just as much legwork for the professor as it is for the students, and it really bespeaks a collaboration, which is um, salient. And we didn't have a plan. I mean, of course, we had a syllabus, and we had readings for each week, but we just, we didn't necessarily follow a plan. So we took off when when it happened and we got inspired by something and then the discussion went into that direction and that was really great fun. Very fluid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> it's my turn. It's my turn. Um, well, I think we should speak, speak to the, the nature of this space, I think, is was what was I mean the the, the 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 tight collaboration yes but the space that made that possible I think is uh, was what was defining for me I've been in small classes before um, I think a few things yeah like the the fact that you the prof was um, genuinely interested in in pursuing a line of inquiry with us mm -hmm. that hadn't been predetermined. Um, and laying down what you know, you know inclinations he had, um, and that let us take off those, as a group take off into do, new directions, which was which was excellent. And I think that that spirit of inquiry, I think, translated into a, you know brought our interests all together in terms of where we were at in, in our interests with the materials, which then took us on path. And I think uh, the other thing is just the I you know for lack of a better term interfaith you know, space, like, uh, let us all talk about, you know, the different intellectual traditions that we are, have been a part of, and including the, the educational tradition that we found ourselves a part of in the course, I think. Um, just being able to bring any line of thought and discourse in to the space is what made it very live, and spent a lot of time talking about histories of different traditions and their commonalities, and and um, yeah, from all our different backgrounds, and I don't like the word background, but you know, our different present intellectual traditions. So that was, I think that was what made it a really live space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if someone want to help me out with that. Yeah, I think that I definitely came to the class without a clear concept of what I wanted to get out of it, so to speak. Uh, but because it was very collaborative and, and fluid, uh, I felt that we were all able to take something from it that was totally like very meaningful and impactful to all our work, even though we're all working in totally different mm -hmm. areas, mm -hmm. which I think is a, an achievement. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I also, I took the class because I sensed that there was something there for me, that there was uh, something I could learn for my dissertation res research. And I didn't exactly know what? Well, I had an idea, but in any case, I, I really learned a lot from it. And um, you don't have to necessarily understand a, a lot about theology, 
I mean, like you are all very knowledgeable about theology, <laughs> but I have absolutely no clue. And sometimes I could not follow, but, um, but then um, there were so many, like I learned a lot about phenomenology and there were so many concepts and ideas that we grappled with. And we taught and, each other. Yeah, and we taught each other, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I would have had the coming in, uh, if you asked me if I had, you know, would be able to participate in a class on theology, you know, I, I would have thought, when I did think, oh, I can probably, you know, make it through, <laughs> you know, and maybe look like I may at some point know what I'm talking about, but like, yeah, it was not, I wasn't thinking, oh yeah, I can totally do a theology class, was, but I mean, the fact, I mean, the way theology was included was more in terms of what are, what are, what are our experiences and our, you know, the, 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 the communities we've been a part of and what is the significance of those and and how, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah talking about the context that is so missing from from so much of everything that we learn in, in yeah. the university setting that the religious aspect of things did inform the writers that we're reading all the time and does inform us even if we don't mm -hmm. know and to talk about that in a conscious way and really unpack it and, and look at it in interesting ways uh, to me was uh, enlightening and and really kind of formative. I don't know. I I, I agree. I, I I agree and um I agree and well I, I think that I think that like in our space that we formed um delving into the theological but doing so in a very secular context mm -hmm. for for me that kind of that juxtaposition kind uh for for me out of that juxtaposition emerged uh something very different uh within myself like in my own studies uh a difference between kind of um knowing knowing something like i, I came into the class being like oh and i'm gonna leave this class knowing so much about like paulo freire and having these different uh opinions and different beliefs and different knowledges about the text and uh and what I discovered through reading this text, and maybe it's because of the theolog theological, but it's not because it's not quite religious, is that I kind of gained more of a of a of a academic an academic belief system, like a, a way like I kind of gained the ability to believe, and I think that's different from knowing, and in the same kind of regard, rather than like just saying things which I think a lot of uh, people who read Freire want us to, they want us to say things. Um, I think that I have a better understanding of this text from a different place such that I can actually mean them or engage with them rather than just say things. Is there a more embodied knowledge of the material? I want to say that, yeah. Personal. personal. Um, personal, yeah, I think, I think that's about it, yeah. There's something a lot more... Um, uh, yeah, spir like spiritual and in a more in an academic sense, like not necessarily in a religious one, but like mm. secular, not in the sense of non-believing, but in the sense of pluralism and, and kind of like acceptance yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and openness. And yeah, like, yes. yeah, I believe that. Yeah, yeah. I believe that. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's really important to um, understand where all these people that we read in our studies uh, where they come from, also in a religious sense um, because we miss out on a lot if we don't see that and uh, for example the things that I read I could read them also in a theological way I read them in a secular way mostly but now I have been sensitized to the theological aspect in, in these readings and I could read them that way as well um, so that really enriched my perspective a lot Especially of the of the kind of like Western knowledge types that are that are that people are really fighting against. That I think we really we added complexity to these ideas in yeah. in, in ways that are, is more reflective of the, the reality or whatever. Um, right. And yeah, yeah, it helped unsettle us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say anything? No, not particularly. <laughs> I suppose if I have any last like questions, suppose, um, uh, I, I suppose my question is is really one related to. Um, I think you all captured a sense in, in, into describing sort of what happened over the last.
semester, and uh, and I, I agree with it. And whatever you, I, I wonder though if you might indulge, uh, well, at least me, but perhaps others who might watch this, into um, what might happen in the future, right? As a result of the class, like you know, I think you've really captured the sense of <clears throat> our shared past, the project, what we did, its present impact. So I see a lot of past and in, 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 in present, um, but I uh, uh, maybe it's vain of me to wonder. But I, I I even wonder myself though, like you know, what is the future? Not just of this class, but I think I think what you all talked about, which is a a really crucial blind spot in the gaze of the secular academy, both within education, but perhaps even more broadly. So. What might the ability to recognize this blind spot and, and work on it and be disturbed by it and, 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 and work through it to, to some extent, how might that change not only your work and not only you, but, but even more ambitiously, how might it change the academy and, I mean, we're on film here, so let's be dramatic, right? I mean, the world, I don't know, yeah. Um, I think I... Um I had interest in this direction in the first, yeah, from, from long ago, before I entered this various last few stages of academia, but I think being involved in a course like this gave me a lot more tools to articulate a lot of these different elements that you just mentioned, and I think uh, legitimize in the academic community some of these um, moves um, in terms of, I guess, uh, reconstructing the nature of public space and the institution. I think particularly, I'm coming from counseling psychology, I think I'm going to be spending some time, um, well, I already was going to, but this will facilitate me spending some time reconstructing the institution of counseling psychology from a more politically um, um, coherent, uh, politically acceptable to me um, format. I think um, both uh, yeah, yeah, the various aspects, Dalby de Brugge, the the um, different theological aspects of Gutierrez, and particularly some of the criticism of Illich. I think I'm going to be using a lot of this material to um, to spend some time reconstructing my field, um, which is already ongoing, but it's, it, I'm going to be able to engage in some of that conversation. And I think uh, there's a lot of potential for um, um, more, 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 ethically responsible practice in my field and, and, and the possibility of avoiding going my field going down some roads that I think could be problematic due to some of the oversights that you mentioned there. Um, that's pretty vague, but um, I got a lot of interest there and I think that I've got some more tools and uh, my mind open to some new possibilities in that project. So. Yeah. I think it helped me articulate something that I had, that had been troubling me about a lot of the work that I've been engaging with. And it helped me understand that I was going down a path that was easy in the academic environment, uh, but that's not really where I wanted to go and that's not where I started. And I, I felt like I was being pushed down that way and uh, it, it helped me like let go of the of the expectations and the um, and really like define for myself what it is that I wanted to achieve um, in in a much broader sense, including like spirituality and uh, social emotional learning and all that stuff too. Mm. I think that is really important. I think we're talking about the in our in the model about the liminal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, I, I don't really, you know, this is, this is a big challenge, but we talked about uh, the, the different ways of knowing and, um, and, 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 I, and I struggle with that. How, how can I reconcile with my kind of positivistic social science self? Um, like a more uh, spiritual or ways of knowing, so the, a way of knowing like this, this, this mystic um, uh, element. element that we had in this model, that 
that I think is important and, uh, and for example, intuition as a way of knowing and things like that. And that's something that I don't find easy to integrate, but that, that I'm still working, I'm still working on it. In any case, I think it's very important. And it was something that you learn about elsewhere, the ultimate ways of knowing and yes. being. And I found yes. that in this class, I was actually able to practice that. Yes, that's right. And that was an even more important learning experience. Yes, yeah. In that respect, we were talking about things that, that you don't easily talk about mm -hmm. in this academic Good job for safe space creation, Sam. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's good too for uh, coming from coming from counseling because you know, like at the at the same time, I'm working with people and creating a different space, um, and um, you know the the telling versus showing mm -hmm. that you know, like what you're talking about, like you know, integrating more embodied or experiential or or uh, liminal, you know, mo uh, types of experiences as part of a, a transformative or educational experience is like um, definitely a point that you know. I, you know, I, I, I need to take more seriously, I think, and I haven't done this at all, but it's going to be something that I need to learn about in my practice. This yeah. class definitely isn't going to end today for yeah, any of us. That's very fair. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, in, in my world of literacy, it's um, di this stuff is directly uh, um, linked to my thesis in the sense that there's a big, I, I'm, I'm doing my thesis on um, Jewish literacies as transmitted through Jewish prayer. Um, I'm doing an ethnography of a Jewish prayer, prayer service in the morning, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but I think what's missing out of our, our literature base about surrounding literacies and about how people come to engage in literacy practices, not just reading and writing, but also like beyond that, um, there's a whole liturgical space where the whole world operates and learns and learns how to do things like learns how to be in a mass or be in a shacharit service in, in the Jewish tradition or um, do religion and these ways are generally sometimes they are but not always passed down outside of the classroom in very salient and thousands of years old uh, practices um, and we don't touch it because it's religious and religion is is can be somewhat of a third rail uh, unless you're like bringing some sort of exotic lens to it um, either way so I, this certainly affects um, the conviction that I have in, in, in um, coming to these uh, does this work my, my thesis work as a Jew uh, uh, investigating Jewish practices um, it, it's going to certainly, um, that's a conversation that, that I'm going to take from this class. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I, I just think another, I think a lot about literacy practices and I think a lot about how to read in, 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 in these contexts of, of schooling and higher education and my own trajectory as, as a grad student. I take from this class an exposure that I've had to how to the process of reading things intentionally. Uh, I'm not talking about just like looking at it through this lens, but more of engaging in a, in a religious tradition of reading things with the intention of opening up, being open to um, not only different interpretations but different, and different meanings, but uh, a sort of letting the text see you. Um, which is so, I know it's kind of kooky and strange, but I mean, the thing about it is that I think that there is, I wonder if there's uh, mystagogic practices to be had, um, and if that could be one of them. And how many times did it happen in the class where we brought up something that we'd be thinking about uh, in a different context, and we realized that this is something that this or that religious sect had been discussing and practicing for years and years, and that we actually had a lot to learn from these traditions and we have this weird stigma about it, but it's so counterproductive. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, there's a lot we can learn from looking backwards and we're so fixated on mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lest I be accused of being too teacherly <laughs> in this um, little, whatever this thing is that we have here, I suppose I should 
<clears throat> raise my biggest insecurity going into the course and at some level holding this camera here, which is uh, is it courting legitimate controversy for a Roman Catholic to be teaching a course at a secular university about three Roman Catholics? Paulo Freire, Gustavo Gutierrez, Ivan Illich. Um, uh, is there a boundary here? Is there, is there a rope here? Is there an edge of a knife that's being treaded on s softly or, or, or what have you? I mean, uh, I opened the course, I think you'll recall, trying to very pedal very sl slowly around the, 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 the non-confessional identity of the class. And I think um, some of you in very sophisticated ways challenged that through your own you know, interfaith confessional kind of spaces. And so I guess I'm e e both a bit confused, but also just as reticent as when we began about the propriety and the, uh, you could say even the politics <laughs> of, uh, of, of, of teaching. You're, I'm allowed to teach my identity if it's my Mexican identity or my Latino identity or my Texan identity. But the idea of at some level teaching identity through the lens of religion, to be honest, I hope I'm not teaching my identity. And if, if that, because I would say that's not quite what religion is. <laughs> Nonetheless, though, it can obviously seem that way because, you know, well, we're sitting here in my house surrounded by Roman Catholic religious art. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what do you say about that? Because that's, uh, I, I don't want to be safe. I think it definitely depends on the person. <laughs> And I think that you in particular uh, were able to bring your background in as a way to add context and to inform us on the things that weren't clear to us because we don't come from that, the same background. Um, sorry for using the word background. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think it worked really well, but I think that it's, it's partially because of the group that we have here where none of us came in like very defensive about mm -hmm. our religious beliefs. and. Uh, we just kind of had the mutual understanding that, hey, we're going to think about these topics and we're going to accept the fact that none of us is trying to convert anyone else or, or change our belief systems or judge us for our belief systems. So in that way, it was a, it was a safe space creation thing and not so much a mm -hmm. politics thing. I understand what safe space means now. Okay. Yeah, there okay. you go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, just, it, yeah, exactly. I agree. It's just, um, it was a, um, it was a, a breaking open of that. Uh, dem demonstration of the the parameters of that space. I mean, bringing the context in and, and demonstrating that that is um, your knowledge base and that you're also interested in 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 critical inquiry on where to go from there and on that knowledge base itself. And I think it was it was um, enabled us to to bring our backgrounds in and um, clearly yeah. and make it personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and. Uh, brought the con your context in in a way that um, there's so much to be said about this but um, your context in in a way that was yeah 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 laying it out and saying this is this is what this is some of the knowledge I can bring to bear and um, I'm interested in, in dialogue and critique and um, yeah um, and also interested in finding um, finding commonalities in our different intellectual lineages um, because I mean it, it would have been interesting if we had non-Abrahamic faiths represented yeah. mm -hmm. if we had humanists this is good um, <laughs> although that like you said could be slightly um, you know it's, it's so but I mean if we had a variety of different faiths that could have worked out differently but I think it still would have had the same had the same um, uh, element of finding those common human universals and I think that we did we did we were able to have excellent conversations that included all of our different backgrounds because of that focus on what what is there to be gained and by um, finding a common space for discourse and um, yeah. and the structure of the class was flexible enough that it could have gone in a million different directions mm -hmm. uh, so it was able to adapt to exactly yeah. what we wanted to, to go forward with and mm -hmm. what we were able to do.
Yeah, you were always very open about uh, other perspectives, and so was everybody in the class. Mm. Um, so there was a lot of openness and respect, and I think that was that was uh, very important. And in a way, it's um, it's good also to to put out there who we are, no? Because that's that's how we understand things. That's how we teach. That's how we learn. And uh, I mean, I, I mean, we're not so much into identity, but ultimately, our identity. We bring our identity mm -hmm. to everything we do. Yeah, and, like uh, it yeah, and it's and and, and uh, if there's respect for others, um, it can be very liberating in a way. Um, mm -hmm. it, it opens up a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, brings in. There's not, there isn't this false dichotomy versus between the, the the sterilized academic theory you're talking about versus your lived experience because there's there is the topic of discussion which can be academic that we do have lived experience but we also have you know vast intellectual traditions that we have been a part of and those um, that's a third party that's not always acknowledged in the in the educational space so to be able to work within this broader um, Arena, um, especially in the com, especially and especially the point of finding the, the the points of contact between our between those spaces we each brought. I think this. Yeah, mm. so. Great. Well, thank you, and thanks to everyone who watches or doesn't watch this video at some point. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye.